Today I'm going to talk about a tool which is used for the prediction of protein structure and function. Earlier we talked about a tool eye taser that performed the similar function, but now we are talking about another tool which is known as PSI PRED. As you can see on your screen, PSI PRED. PRED means prediction. So this tool is quite like the eye taser tool but it also has certain differences if we compare it with eye taser so this psi pred is also there to predict the protein structure and function and for the sake of simplicity let's just call it psi pred although this tool has nothing to do with the greek alphabet psi but just for the sake of simplicity let's call it psi pred so this psi pred tool is linked with the psi blast now we know that if we go to this blast portion of ncbi we can see that when we place our faster format here we have the option of psi blast here and this psi blast is totally linked with this psi pred tool now this psi means position specific iterative prediction or it has a link with position specific iterative blast or the psi blast right now if we look at the home page it is quite simple and here we have two options either we can feed them the amino acid sequence or we can give them the pdb structure data right we have both the options but we are sticking to the first option and if you can see this particular portion we have multiple options we can give them we can check different things according to our requirement if we want to work on the fold recognition then we can check this particular box and then if we want to see the domain prediction then we can check this particular thing and if we want to find out about the function of our query protein we have this option of clicking this box so we can check different certain box according to our need according to our requirement but this is the main difference between eye taser and cypred in the eye taser we don't really have any kind of checklist right if we look from top to bottom we don't really have any checklist here and we just simply have to place our amino acid here and then we have to place all the required credentials here and after placing all these things we have to hit this tab right let's click this particular thing i want to know about the structure and function of my query protein right and then if I click this particular thing and I want information regarding the function of my particular protein or curie protein, I have to check this particular box and you can see at the top right top portion, if I uncheck it, this tab disappears. But if I check it, something appears. Now, as you can see that function could be predicted for humans or any other organism like fly. But by default, human prediction is selected and we also want human prediction. And then if we want to check this particular thing, it has something to do with the location of the amino acids. Now, certain amino acids are involved in the formation of transmembrane portion of the protein and certain different amino acids are involved in extracellular region formation and certain amino acids or part of the protein are also cytoplasmic. So this particular thing here, MEMSAT, this has something to do with membrane helix prediction, right? And we will talk about this particular thing in a moment. So this section is complete. Now let's move toward the next section. Now this is the particular box where we have to place our amino acid sequence, right? And let's put an amino acid sequence here now this particular amino acid sequence belongs to halobacterium strain and you can see that it is starting with methionine and it is ending at aspartic acid d represents aspartic acid and then we have to give a job name to this particular query so let's give it the name hal hal as it belongs to halobacterium strain and now again we have a difference again there is this difference between eye taser and this cypred tool here you can see that email is optional but if we talk about this particular eye taser email is mandatory we have to give them the email so that they can send us the result in the form of email right but here email is optional 
now it is recommended to give them the email but for the time being i am skipping this portion and i just want to submit the result and why the email is optional because they can display the result within 10 to 15 minutes in new window or new tab and when i click this they will display a message that i should provide an email but I am submitting it without an email. So let's click OK here. And now it will take about 10 to 15 minutes to display our result. And you can see these icons there, right? This means that our curio protein or the sequence is being processed. And for different information, like first two portions predict the secondary structure of our protein, right? And then we have MEMSAT, which will tell us whether the portion is dealing with transmembrane section or any other section like cytoplasmic section or the extracellular region. And then finally, FF spread means that it will give us information regarding the function. It will predict functions related to our Curie protein. Okay, now it will take about 10 to 15 minutes. So after the passage of 10 to 15 minutes, you will be able to see this particular screen and the first portion here. We have the first portion here and then second, third and fourth. Let's talk about the first one. It has three sections and the first section, if I click the first section here, you can see that we have three colors here, which are pink, yellow and light gray. And pink portion is representing alpha helices and all these amino acids that are displayed in pink color, they are forming the alpha helices, right? And if we talk about the yellow ones, they are the beta sheets or the beta strands. And in between the two beta strands or one alpha helix and the beta strand, we have the gray amino acids that are actually the loops that are connecting different items or different things of protein, whether they are alpha helices or the beta sheets or strands. So that was the first information and we can see that this is the same amino acid sequence starting from methionine and ending at aspartic acid. And there are almost 262 amino acid in this particular protein, right? And then if we talk about the second portion, now we have some more colors, orange there. These orange amino acids are forming the extracellular region of our protein, okay? And if we talk about the gray ones, they are belonging to the transmembrane helix. As you can see in these legends that this color is representing transmembrane portion. So they have certain interaction with the membrane. Okay. And if I click this last one here, again, we have four different colors here. Now we know that certain amino acids are hydrophobic and certain are hydrophilic. Hydrophilic means water loving, those things that are attracted towards water. And we can get the idea what is meant by hydrophobic. It's the opposite. So they are not attracted towards water. The green ones, the green ones are hydrophobic. OK, but if we talk about the red amino acids, they are hydrophilic. They are attracted towards water, right? They are water loving. And in fact, another name for hydrophilic or water loving is polar. So they are polar amino acids. And if we talk about the orange ones, they are non-polar, but they are very small in size, right? And lastly, we can talk about the light blue section, light blue. That means they are aromatic. And we know that aromatic means they are the portions, they are the part or they are the amino acids that contain the benzene ring. They have benzene ring in their structure. So they are the aromatic amino acids, right? So the first section is completed here. We can move towards the next thing here again. This is the secondary structure, but in more like a graphical form. It is more like a graph, right? It has four different sections. First one, you can see different bars, but all the bars have different kind of heights. Some are higher. Some have the highest peak. Some possess the lower peaks. So here you can see four things. First one, second, third and fourth. And in the first section, you can see the bars. You can see bars of different heights here, right? And then we have the same three colors. We know that pink color means alpha helices. Yellow means beta sheets or strands. And if we talk about the gray portion here, gray portion here means coils, right? So coil is connecting this particular alpha helix with this particular beta sheet. Now again, there is this difference. If we talk about this third particular portion, this is the alphabetic representation of different things belonging to the secondary structure of protein. We know that 
secondary structure of protein has three things alpha helix beta strands and coils so again we have a difference between eye taser and this particular cyprid in the eye taser beta sheets were represented by s but in this particular tool e is used for beta sheets now rest of the two things other two things are same like eye taser in the eye taser tool alpha helices were represented by h and coils were represented by c so the only difference here is this e in eye taser we used s for the sheets but in cypred we are using e for beta sheets okay and lastly you can see the methionine and so on all the other amino acids so a is amino acid pred is prediction in the form of alphabets and then you can see different colors color combination or colors given to the three components of scanty structure of protein and let's talk about this particular thing the bars we haven't talked about these bars yet so if the height of this bar is greater so this particular thing is actually confidence score they are representing the confidence score if this bar has greater height and the confidence score is close to 9 even 8 or 7 that means that this particular prediction is acceptable and it is reliable and it is quite accurate but if the peak is lower here you can see one some or even zero that means this particular section here it is predicted but it may not be that accurate so we are not confident we are not sure whether this portion will actually have the beta sheets right so this is not a reliable information so the information is not reliable if we have lower confidence score or if the height of the bar is quite less so i hope you can get the simple idea greater the height of these bars more reliable is the information regarding the prediction so now we can move towards last thing so here you can also see the legend if we want to use this result in our thesis or in our research projects or articles we can get them in two different forms either in the png format or svg format we can get them in the form of images so again whether we talk about the first result we can also get them in these two formats and then place them or put them in our thesis right and let's talk about the third thing now as i've told you before it has something to do with the positions position of amino acids whether they are part of the trans membrane whether they are part of the cytoplasm or they belong to the extracellular region so there are three colors here we can see orange one then we have this black or dark gray you can say and then we have blue ones and we also have the white one so we actually have four different representations you can see that this is the starting portion of our amino acids and then we also have the fifth color which is pink these two lines you can see these two lines here right so all the legends are given here they are quite easy and they are quite easy to understand so the white portion represents cytoplasmic amino acids and then we have orange for the extracellular region and similarly these blue ones they are involved in pore formation they are part of the gap or the pore that is formed within the membrane right and again these things they are part of or they are actually the trans membrane helices now we know that helices are part of membranes it is very rare that beta sheets are part of the membrane so that's why you can see helix everywhere this one that one and so on. so this memsat is quite important sub tool of this cypred now let's talk about this final thing now here you can see three different things again it is quite like the eye taser prediction of function we have the three things whether our curie protein is involved in any biological process right and then we also have molecular function prediction and then finally we also have this last prediction whether our curie protein is part of any component of cell so let's move to the first one here you can see different functions now we want to know whether our protein is involved in any biological process or not so here you can see reliability reliability is given in the form of h or l so here you can see that our curie protein could be involved in lipid metabolic process and the chances or the reliability of this information is quite high and the probability as well as the reliability is quite high so that means this is the predicted function related to our curie protein but if we talk about 
about these last two things that our query protein has something to do with the stimulus either recognizing any stimulus or responding to any stimulus but the chances or the reliability of this particular prediction is quite low so that means there are very slim chances that our query protein is involved in recognition of any particular stimulus so now we can move towards the next thing molecular function now here if we randomly pick something this one here so it says that our query protein could be involved in the process of catalysis so it is involved in catalytic activity and chances probability and reliability is quite high there but if we talk about its activity as enzyme hydrolase activity this particular function is predicted but reliability is quite low that means there are slim chances that our query protein could be involved in this enzymatic action and now the things are quite obvious that if we talk about cellular component whether our query protein is involved in the formation of plasma membrane so it's quite obvious now if we look at this particular thing plasma membrane so the reliability is quite high the chances are quite high that our query protein will form the plasma membrane but again if we talk about cytoplasm or protein complex formation the reliability is quite low so this particular function or this particular thing is predicted but it may not be true their reliability is quite low so lastly i can talk about this particular thing this is geo gene ontology so in conclusion we can say that the cypred tool is quite like the itizer tool same kind of function is performed but there are certain differences as well between the itizer and cypred so both these things have their own advantages so i hope this lecture was helpful thank you for listening